Nearly two-thirds of adults globally have been a victim of some kind of cybercrime. 90% of today's cyber attacks are a direct result of organized crime. The financial sector is one of the main targets of cybercrime. Because of this, many banks have implemented new security measures. An example is sending confirmation codes via text messaging to validate online transactions. But cyber criminals are constantly adapting their strategies to overtake new security measures. This means that if a bank sends a confirmation code to a cell phone, hackers may attempt to access the phone, find the confirmation code, and thus be able to confirm money transfers from your bank account. And since the latest and greatest cell phones allow us to connect to the internet and install applications, this usually makes us more vulnerable to cyber attacks. Cyber criminal organizations have exploited this vulnerability with their latest strategy, known as Man on the Mobile. Man on the Mobile works like this. Cyber criminals infect your PC with a Trojan. Then, when you enter your bank's website, the Trojan makes a pop-up window appear and asks for your cell phone number, saying you'll need to install an application for online banking. You think it's your bank who's asking for your cell phone number, so you type it in. Now, hackers who have infected your computer also have your cell phone number. Once they have this information, the next step is to send you a text message pretending to be your bank. The text message includes a link to download the application they said you needed for online banking. You still think it's your bank, so you click on the link to download the application and install it. However, after finishing the process, you find no trace of the application running. You don't know it, but a malicious code has just been installed on your device. By monitoring the web page from which you have downloaded the application, the hackers now know it is time to continue to the next step. They send you a short text message from an unknown number. It doesn't seem to make any sense, and maybe you think someone sent it to you by mistake. What you don't know is that this message was a command that has just activated the Trojan. Later comes another seemingly meaningless text message. If the Trojan has been successfully activated, it commands your cell phone to send a copy of every message you receive to the hackers. At this point, cyber criminals are in total control of both your computer and your cell phone. Using a Trojan, the hackers make your computer connect to your bank's website. From there, it orders an online transfer of a large amount of money. Following its online security policy, the bank sends you a text message with the confirmation code needed to validate the transaction. And while you're still trying to figure out what happened, the cyber criminals have already received the same message. They have entered the code, and they have successfully completed the money transfer. The money transfer goes to the bank account of another person, usually known as a mule, who doesn't know the money is stolen. The mule receives a commission to take the cash and wire it to the cyber criminals. Now the money trail is lost, and it's impossible to trace the money to the real criminals. The fraud is completed. How to avoid falling into the trap? Step 1. Protect your devices. Protect your computer with firewalls, antivirus, and regular security updates. It's also a good idea to have antivirus software on your cell phones if it has access to the internet. Step 2. Communicating with your bank. If your bank offers it, it's a good idea to register with an alert service that lets you know whenever there's a transaction that exceeds a certain amount of money. And if you ever receive confirmation codes of transactions that you haven't authorized, you should get in touch with your bank immediately. Be alert when you receive text messages, emails, or phone calls on behalf of your bank. It is very unusual for banks to ask for private information such as security codes, passwords, or cell phone numbers especially if they're asking you to give them the information over the phone or on the internet. It's also very unusual for a bank to request private information at all if you haven't recently requested any services from the bank. Step 3. Downloading Applications Whenever you want to download an application, do it through a reliable source such as the official website of each manufacturer or supplier. 
Applications can be configured to limit the extent of their powers, such as prohibiting them from accessing the internet, sending text messages, or accessing the camera or microphone of the device. And finally, regularly review phone bills to see if any calls or messages have been sent to unknown numbers. If you suspect that someone is using your personal information, or if you think you've been the victim of an attack similar to the man on the mobile, contact your bank immediately. Financial organizations, the Catalan Law Enforcement Agency, and CESICAT all pursue and investigate criminal activity on the internet. But remember that you can avoid falling victim to cybercrime by using some simple precautions. Protect your devices, stay on the lookout for any unusual communications. And if you believe you are a victim of an online scam, take action.